Howdy everyone, it's Dyson here, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about the PS Plus Extra and Premium game catalog that was just announced. First off, I'm going to talk about the games that are available to both Extra and Premium subscribers, because later on there are some that are only available to Premium subscribers. At the end of this, I'm going to give a, kind of a rating for this month of how good the game catalog games are, these new ones, which some of them, uh, these games that are on this list are going to really boost it for me, and a lot of these games games, and I mean a lot of them, because there's so many of them, are going to kind of lower the score for me, because I'm not excited about them. But there are some that I'm excited about, because some that I don't own, and some that I already do own, but some that I don't own that I'm excited to finally try. First one, they're starting out big with The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, which is pretty awesome. I mean, a lot of people probably already own this game, because it, it, sell, it, 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 it sold very well well so i would say yeah a lot of people own it but for the people who don't and have always wanted to try it if you have at least extra premium then you can give it a shot i would say it's definitely worth it it's a very great game it's an amazing game i mean the year it came out i forget which year it was but it did get game of the year that year and it was a very deserved one at that because there's some games of the year that i would say had other better competing games but yeah that's also personal preference but witcher 3 i would say yeah it's it's deserving of its title, and that's going to be both the PS4 and PS5 version that are going to be on there. Up next we have the standard edition of Wild Hearts, which is only going to be the PS5 version, but from what I've seen of Wild Hearts, people liked it, and it, I mean, you know, it, was, it satiated the hunger for more Monster Hunter for a lot of people. I never tried it, but I will probably try it now as I get ready for Monster Hunter Wilds to come out, because Monster Hunter Wilds is going to be awesome. I didn't really get into Monster Hunter until World, but World just made me love playing Monster Hunter, and then uh, I got Rise on my Switch to play with my buddies, and I'm gonna get Wilds on my PS5, and hopefully my buddies will all have a PS5 and also get Wilds by the time it comes out. Hopefully, fingers crossed, but... Wild Hearts did look good from any gameplay that I did watch back when it first came out. I watched some of my favorite streamers play it just to see what it was about, and there was like a kind of a weird building aspect, but it, that actually looked like it was implemented very well, but then it just didn't get as big as Monster Hunter, which is, uh, you know, kind of inevitable whenever there's already a series that does it well that's done it for so long. The other ones, people are going to just call a ripoff, and it's not going to sell as well. I would not say Wild Hearts is a ripoff, though. It... It's definitely different enough that it can stand alone as its own good title in the genre of the Monster Hunter series. Because, like, what else do you call a Monster Hunter game besides a Monster Hunter game, you know? Like, even though the game is Monster Hunter, its genre could also just be Monster Hunter. Which, so is Wild Hearts. Up next there is Cult of the Lamb. We're getting the PS4 and PS5 version of this. This one I just read the summary to, and I, at first I was just like, Cult of the Lamb, like, well, you know, what's, what's this? I've heard of it before, but never really knew what it was. Then I read the summary, and the thing that I really liked was when I heard randomly generated worlds. I'm like, ooh, that's, that's fun. And then, you know, fighting off hordes of enemies. Okay, I like that and defeat rival cult leaders in order to absorb their power and assert your cult's dominance. That part was also insane to read, but I was okay with it because of what I read before, which is the whole, you know, your character being saved by some deity, and you're also possessed, and you're also trying to build a cult for whoever saved you, and all that fun stuff. So that's insane, but also sounds awesome. So <laughs> I, uh, this, is, this is boosting up the rank of the of this month's games already just because I didn't I didn't know there was a game like this. Heck yeah, build my own cult. Let's go. <laughs> I, this this actually sounds pretty good. <laughs> Up next we got Ride 5 for the PS5 and yeah, it's you know, it's it's a racing game. I think it's mostly motorcycles and stuff like that. I've not ever really been the most excited about racing games. Racing games that I enjoy are like the occasional Gran Turismo is fun. I really like the way Forza does it. Especially their more open world stuff. That that's fun, and I really like Mario Kart. So yeah, there's there's my racing games right there, or any kind of other silly racing game. So you know, Sonic Team Racers and the Crash Bandicoot stuff and Diddy Kong Racing. You know, silly goofy ones like that. That's that's more of my jam for racing. This kind of racing, not really my jam. But from the gameplay I saw, it actually does look pretty fun. But I I doubt I I'll try. But I could try it now. I, I, 
I have a premium. I'll try it. Right? Yeah, I might try it. Up next is Watch Dogs 2, the PS4 version of it. I did play the first Watch Dogs, and I really enjoyed it. I have never played Watch Dogs 2, so I'll probably give it a try. I don't remember uh, what I heard about Watch Dogs 2. I don't remember if the reviews were good or bad or, or just a, a mix. My guess is probably a mix because there's like a third. There's like a third Watch Dogs now, isn't there? Maybe a fourth one? I don't even remember how many Watch Dogs there are. But I'd like the first one enough that I, I'll give Watch Dogs 2 a try. Why not? Oh boy. Okay, now we're into <laughs> the, the games that are going to kind of lower my score a little bit. Just because I'm not a huge fan of the series. So this is kind of, this is some prejudice right here. <laughs> so I'm sorry in advance. Um, Sword Art Online Last Recollection. I don't even know what these games, gameplay are like. I will go look at them, I'm sure. I've just never seen gameplay for them. I've never even heard how these games play or what they're like. So I would have to assume that they're maybe turn-based or maybe they're action. If they're action, that's better. I like that. I mean, turn-based is good too. As long as it's done right, because some turn-based isn't fun. But there's a lot of turn-bases done good. Like uh, Persona 5's turn-based was good. I like Fire Emblem, so that's fun turn-based. Paper Mario 64 and Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, those were pretty great. Those, uh, those are great turn-based. So if they can do turn-based like that, a very similar system to that, that's, that's probably okay. But we're in the PS4 and PS5 version of Sword Art Online, Last Recollection. But I don't even have to go watch gameplay or anything like that to know that I'm just not interested because it's Sword Art Online. I, I tried to watch it and I just couldn't get into it. And normally I like Isekai and the whole trapped in a game stuff from other things I've seen because like Log Horizon's good, but I don't know why. I, I, and there's just something about it. I mean, maybe I don't like the characters or something. I don't know. There's just something about Sword Art Online that I can't get into. And one of my closest friends, this is like one of his favorites, so that probably disappoints him. But hey, everyone has their cup of tea when it comes to shows and games and stuff like that. Up next is Naruto to Boruto Shinobi Striker on PS4. And I, I mean, it, adding in Boruto stuff, and this is early on Boruto stuff, not even stuff where the manga is now for Boruto. And the Boruto anime does not give Boruto a good shining light. Over half of it is filler, I think, or a majority of it. Because I was watching the Boruto anime until I was just like, okay, there's just too much filler. This isn't... <laughs> I started reading the manga instead. The manga is pretty good, not gonna lie. There, there are some things that I don't like as a Naruto fan, but there's other stuff that is great. And being that Naruto to Boruto Shinobi Striker is some of the earlier Boruto stuff, it's, it doesn't interest me as much. So it's gonna, it's, it's gonna be an okay game. I played one of the Naruto Shippuden games, and that was fun. So if I, if I'm right, then I think I've seen gameplay of it, and it's very similar to the game that I have tried and liked. So it's still probably gonna play well and be fun if you're a big fan of the series and stuff like that. But uh, this neither hurts or helps the ranking I'm giving later for the overall goodness of this month's game catalog. But the next one sure hurts a little bit because it's another Sword Art Online game, Alicization, Alicization uh, Lycoris. I don't even know. That uh, is Alice like a character, and that's why it's Alice. Like uh, pff, I have no idea. And again, I have no idea what the gameplay is like. But that's you're in a PS4 version of that. Up next is another Sword Art Online. And it's a PS4 version of it. Sword Art Online Fatal Bullet. Okay, this one is the only one I've actually ever seen any kind of stuff for, and it doesn't look horrible. So maybe I'm just giving them too bad of a rap, but it doesn't look great either to me, but it wasn't, it wasn't horrible. So this one doesn't minus. This one's a neutral one for me because I was like, oh, you know what, that actually looks decent. <laughs> Up next is another Sword Art Online. Oh my God. This was also a PS4 version. Hollow Realization. Hey, that one had real words. Well, I kind of messed up Lycoris earlier also, but the other word, Alizization or whatever, that's, is that a real word? I don't think so. If it is, then I, I don't know. This one is a VMR MORPG. I'm not even sure what that is. I know what an RPG is. I know what an MMO is. So is this like a, is this specifically VR? Uh, oh, 2026 sort of origin, a new, VR MMO RPG has emerged. Okay, that's not what this game is. God dang it. I'm, I'm over here just glimpsing the summary and confusing myself on what kind of fucking game it is. Okay, so this one is supposed to play similar to an MMO RPG. Gotcha. All right, that, that's probably not as bad. I, eh, I won't negative it. 
that is everything that is available to both extra and premium subscribers. So now we're going to get on to the stuff that's only available to premium subscribers. And first up is Vacation Simulator, which is for PlayStation VR 2, I think VR 2 specifically also. So if you don't, if you have original VR, I, I mean, I'm guessing original PlayStation VR works, but it says here PlayStation VR 2. So we'll, we'll see. It does have double asterisks. Let's see what it says. Da -da -da -da. Okay, it is both VR versions of the game. Cool. Up next, okay, this one does get me excited because I've never tried Time Splitters and I've always heard great things about Time Splitters from people on the internet, which you can't always trust people on the internet. I know that. But also some friends of mine who have really liked Time Splitters back, you know, when, yeah, I was playing different games than some of my friends were when they were younger and, well, we were all younger, <laughs> not not just them. I was playing freaking Nintendo. I was a Nintendo kid and I, I had a PlayStation also. I just never had an original Xbox. So I was playing shit like Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank, Crash Bandicoot, Spire the Dragon. You know, that was the stuff I was playing on my PlayStation, PlayStation 2. And then on Nintendo, my GameCube and stuff like that, I was playing Metroid, all the Mario stuff, all the Mario sports stuff. Anything that was Donkey Kong related, anything that was Zelda related. I just was playing it all. It was just anything I get my hands on that was a GameCube game. And I was playing Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door over and over and over again, because I love that game. But Time Splitters, I can finally try, and we're getting the PS4 and PS5 version of this. So that's freaking cool. I'm, I'm excited to try Time Splitters. This is points up for me, because I have seen gameplay of these games. Because the next one is Time Splitters 2, also PS4 and PS5 version. And again, I've seen gameplay of it, and they, they always look fun. I've always heard good things. So I'm ready to try it. It's going to be it's gonna be great. And again, Another Time Splitters, Time Splitters Future Perfect, PS4, PS5, which I believe this is all the Time Splitter games, right? I think so. Again, seen gameplay of it. It looks great. Heard good things. I'm assuming, you know, it's remastered, so it looks even better, because, you know, the gameplay I saw was old gameplay that my friends would show me on the phone, like, oh, yeah, Time Splitters was awesome. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited to try it. <sighs> and then, <laughs> up next for premium, we have Sword Art Online Lost Song. Another Sword Art Online game. No way. I think this was this was like a PS3 game originally, I think, but this is we're in the PS4 version of it. So that's cool. This one I think I've actually seen gameplay of before. As soon as I said Lost Song, I was like, why do I why do I know this name? And I think I've actually seen a friend of mine playing it when I went over to his house one time. And when I remember it just looked like it looked decent. Probably not something I'll try. Because again, not interested in sort of online stuff. But yeah, that's I think that's the last one. So I guess I'll have to give my rating now. So stuff like the Witcher and Wild Hearts, all the time splitter stuff, that's that's bonus points for me. Some of these sort of online games are dragging it down. Some of them are kind of neutral. None of the Sword Art games are bringing the points up, though. But just because of all the time splitters that I've always wanted to try, and Wild Hearts that I've wanted to try being on here, that's that's a lot of that's a lot of points, because um, I'm going to give it a something out of 10. I already own The Witcher 3, but Witcher 3 is a great title to bring over to this, because The Witcher 3 is awesome. It's a great game. So I'm going to have to go with uh, overall... Oh man, some of these games are just so good or that I'm so excited about. I'm going to have to give it, I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10. That's what I'll give it. 8.5 out of 10 this month for this, uh, uh, for August 2024 game catalog. All of these games will be available to play on August 20th. So yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Tell me in the comments, you know, if you agree with me or not on what, <laughs> what games you're excited for or, or the rating of this month's games and all that fun stuff. But thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Toodaloo.